Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be going over an example problem. So last video we went over a three-point test cross doing it the normal way. In this problem, we're going to be doing a backwards three-point test cross. So I'm going to throw, show you the genetic map of three genes, tell you their map units, and see if you can figure out the expected numbers of the progeny based on the map units. And it's pretty cool to be able to do this and it also helps you visualize, you know, if you can work something backwards, it also helps you work it forwards as well because then you could check your work too. All right, so here is the problem we are working on today. So again, all these problems, make sure you do them yourself so you can figure out where you're struggling for each one. And I'll, I'll go through the problem now and show you um, everything to fill out. So here you want to see if a three point, if three point test crosses accurately estimate genetic distance. You know the genetic map for three genes, each with recessive mutations V, Z, and W. So right here is the genetic map. So 18.8 .8 map units between V and Z and 11.1 .1 between Z and W. So what else do I tell you here? So if interference is equal to 81%, determine the number of progeny expected for each phenotype out of 1,000 total. So here our total is 1,000. In the following test cross of a heterozygote, that is in coupling for all three genes. So I tell you the cross. So I, we do a test cross. Remember what a test cross is for a three point test cross. You take a heterozygote, high, well, cross a um, homozygous recessive. And I also tell you it's in coupling. So that tells you that all of the dominant ones are on the same chromosome and all the recessive ones are on another, the other chromosome for the heterozygote. Now, if I told you it was in repulsion, they'd be flipped and mixed. All right, so, but I tell you that, so what is our cross here? So this is the gene order VZW. So the first, and we're looking at the cross here, this is what you wanna draw first. Oh, I should show the rest of the problem first. So you would work on the problem and then fill in this table here. So if you wanna work ahead um, and try to figure out the problem, you would write the numbers in this table here, and those would be your answers. So how do we get these numbers here? That's what we're gonna go over. So we have to figure out what these orders are. So we have to figure out the single crossovers, we have to figure out the non-recombinants, and we have to figure out the double crossovers. Then we have to calculate all the numbers based on our um, RFs. All right, let's go through this now. So here, again, we're writing out the cross here. So we have a heterozygote one, a B, Z, W. And then we're crossing that with homozygous recessive. So remember, the letters are the recessive form. So this would be our cross. So we're focused on this one right here. And again, the order is given to us. We know this is the order of the um, alleles here. So a single crossover could occur between these two. A single crossover could occur between these two. And a double crossover could occur in the middle here. So we know our Z is the middle gene. Um, Okay, so let's, okay, we have that. Now you wanna look at your table here and try to figure out which ones are the non-recombinants. So the non-recombinants are, you know, these ones here, they're the parents. So plus, 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 or V, Z, W. So this would be one non-recombinant. And then this would be the other non-recombinant. Next, you wanna find the cross uh, between V and Z. So this would be a single crossover between V and Z. So one, order here would be plus Z W. So then right down here, we find plus Z W. So this is a single crossover uh, between, uh, well, V and Z. Then the other one would be V plus plus, V plus plus. So this one's a single crossover between V and Z as well. Uh, next one here, we wanna find the other crossover event. So if this cross happened right here, you'd have plus plus W. So let's check down here. So here, plus plus W, this is a single crossover between Z and W. And then the other one would be V, Z plus, would be the other crossover here. So V, Z plus, single crossover between Z and W again. And then the other ones would be as if there's a middle cross. So that would be if these two switch sides. So we'd have plus Z plus and V plus W. 
So right there, these are V plus W. So this is the double crossover. And plus Z plus, this is also a double crossover. Very important to you know write these out at the start because now you know the double crossover should have the fewest number. Uh, single crossovers will all be in the middle. And then the non-recombinants will have the highest number of expected. So where do we go now? So I tell you the map units and I tell you the interference. Remember, you can use the recombination frequencies to calculate things. So first here, uh, switch back to normal color. Uh, remember, interference is equal to 81%. Remember, you can write this as 0.81. We'll use the decimal places for our calculations here. Uh, now, you don't have to calculate the coefficient here. So remember, um, the interference This is, is equal to uh, 1 minus the coefficients of confidence here, which is equal to 0.81. You could technically calculate this, so COC um, is equal to 1 minus 0.81. So COC is equal to 0 0.19. You can save this number later as a check. Remember, this number is um, observed over expected. That's what the COC is equal to. So it'd be one minus observed divided by expected is 81%. So we need to figure out expected. And that's what we're calculating here. Um, we can also use these values to calculate observed. And this is where we go back to the map units. So remember for calculating um, expected here, you take each um, recombination frequency between, so you take the recombination frequency between VZ times the recombination frequency between ZW. So, so point 0.1, let me make sure the numbers are right, 88 times 0.111. So that's the recombination frequency or the map units here of each one. Multiplying these together gives you point, um, 0 0.021. So this is the expected frequency of double crossovers. So we expect 2.1% of all the crossovers to be double crossovers. So if I tell you we have 1,000 total, we could take that total 1,000 times that 0 0.021 and figure out the expected number of double, double crossovers. So here the expected number of double crossovers would be 20.9. Boom, 20.9. So now we have the expected number of double crossovers here. Okay, so now what? That's not necessarily what you might observe because we have an interference of 81%. So we will not see 81% of these 20.9 expected double crossovers. So you could calculate that by taking, so we can look at, um, so double crossovers, let me write this out here. So double crossovers observed with 81% interference. The way you calculate this, there's a couple different ways. So one, you can use the 81% or well, you use it also here. So this 0.19 is equal to observed over expected. And then you take expected uh, times that and that will give you observed. Or you could take the 81% and so we have the same thing here, 20.9 times 0.81, so here, 81% of these will be hidden. So what is 81%? 81% of these is 16.93. So that's how many we don't see. So you, then you can take 20.9 uh, minus 16.93, and that equals 3.97, or roughly four. So what this number is, so these are the double crossovers observed. And that's what we want to uh, write in these results here because we're given the interference. I know the problem asked, um, determine the number of progeny expected, but for these double crossovers, because we're given the interference, we actually want to write, so we would expect four total. So because we have two double crossover events then, it'd be two for each. Okay, so there's our first answer. Uh, so you divide that by two to get the actual results. Now the rest are you know, pretty easy because I tell you there's 0.188 recombination frequency between V and Z. 
We know this one's a single crossover between V and Z, and this one's a single crossover between V and Z. So if we do uh, V to Z, all you have to do is take 0.188 times 1,000, and that equals 188. We have two single crossovers between V and Z, so then you divide that by two, and that equals 94 for each. So 94 for each. And then the other one will be Z to W, and that's 0 0.111 times 1,000. And this one equals 111. You divide that by two. Now this one be a decimal place. You can round if you want, but we'll keep it as a decimal uh, for now. So 55.5 for the other ones. I wouldn't mark you incorrect on my exams. If you write the decimal there. I know you can't have a 0.5 progeny, but you know what I mean. Okay, so the last ones we have left are the non-recombinants. We could do these a couple different ways. Uh, so we know all the totals we have here. So we know our, you know, our total is 1,000. Non-recombinants are going to be equal as well. So what you could do here is you could just, the so non-recombinants then would equal 1,000 minus all the other numbers. Uh, so 1,000 minus um, 188 plus 111, uh, and then plus 4. So that's all these totals here. And that will give us an, uh, what is it, 697. Divide that by 2, that then equals 348.5. Boom. So 348.5 non-recombinants in each. So isn't that neat? So you can use just this little bit of data here. So, you know, very rarely will you have, you know, the map units before and the order of the genes before you get these numbers, but you can figure out how many you should expect. So if you're given this, if I tell you these are your three genes and I tell you to do this cross, you can then compare your expected numbers to your actual observed numbers. You could do a chi-square analysis then and to see if your chi-square then matches, so you'll be then comparing observed with expected results to see if your hypothesis here of these map units are correct. So a super cool little tool here that you can use, and also it helps you understand single crossovers, double crossovers, uh, gene orders, interference, and exactly what that means. Remember interference, because look, these are actually pretty close together here, 11.1, uh, 18.8. The last example problem, they were a little further apart. So interference was, um, I think 20%, I forget exactly. Um, what was it? 34% in the last example problem. Uh, so those were further apart. I think they were like, you know, the whole distance was like 46 map units. These ones are closer. So there's gonna be a, a higher interference when a crossover occurs here with a crossover here. So a lower chance of getting that double crossover event occurring successfully. So you might not even see these here showing up in your final results as well. But this is out of a thousand total progeny. So lots and lots of progeny to analyze here. But that's all I have for this example today. I hope you understood it and it helps solidify three-point test crosses. That's why I like these backwards ones because it kind of pulls everything together. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, this ends the linkage chapter here. Uh, and I'll see you all in the next chapter. All right. Hope you all have a great day and bye-bye.